Hello everyone, welcome to Tower Academic. Uh, today we want to look at Indian Ocean Trade. As usual, uh, this is a channel that brings you all the content in history and all the different subjects, geography and many others. So today we want to look at Indian Ocean. Above all, allow me first to start by thanking to those who have been able to subscribe to this channel and been able to watch this content. Above all, allow me also to request people who have not yet subscribed because when I look at the percentages of views here I see most of you are not subscribed to the channel please we, we are kindly requesting you to subscribe just click that subscription button so that we grow this channel to our target is now 200 subscribers 200,000 subscribers and we shall be there as we speak right now it is 1,000 so today we want to look at Indian Ocean trade uh, what was this trade uh, how did it happen how did it start so we want to look at the history so allow us dive into it right away so indian ocean trade uh before even moving further uh you've been asking us and the requests have been seen in the comments please we have also gone ahead to open up our website and that is www.towacademic.com uh please just feel free to check us out more content is there more courses more information more content of all the videos that we present here and more is on our website so please check out our website www.toweracademic.com and get more the link is in the description below or you can just browse it www.toweracademic.com and you'll be able to see much more there so indian ocean uh, what was indian ocean uh, it, where was it and why is it called the Indian Ocean many other things that's what we're going to look at uh, in today's video and we want to cover that history that was those days about uh, the Indian Ocean trade so what do we have today on our plate uh, what we have today is what was the Indian Ocean trade uh, organization of the trade factors for the growth of the Indian Ocean trade effects of the Indian Ocean trade and uh, we shall conclude at that so we are saying let's begin with the first one and we're saying indian ocean trade what was it so we're saying this was the trade that was carried uh, uh between the coastal people and arabs mainly the arabia persian across the indian ocean uh, that's why it picks its name because uh people were sailing over the indian ocean and that's why it gets its name the indian ocean trade so the trade was a result of contact between the land of Azania. those days the east african coast was called the Zania. uh basically the land of black people and then the arabia and persian who came in in search of commodities so it was also trade that the, 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 the trade relationship between the east african coast and the arabia as we shall see so this is a, a map that shows us how it happened that how it all happened so we are saying the major transport there was uh, the doors and these doors were sailing on the indian ocean and uh, powered by the monsoon winds so as you can see there we have monsoon winds coming to the coast and monsoon winds going back to arabia so that briefly explains uh the movement of these doors from the east african coast as we can see here from the east african coast around this area moving back to arabia which is around near oman yemen around this area so we're saying they were sailing on the indian ocean and then they were using doors to sail as we've seen so these doors were the major uh, transporter uh, modes that used to bring arabs to the coast and then take goods away from east africa to arabia so we are also saying where the major traders in this trade uh, the major traders here we have arabs uh, the persians and then the africans at the coast and these were the major traders into this trade so basically we are seeing the foreigners being the arabs and the persian in contact with the africans at the coast and thus making and growing that Indian Ocean trade at the cost of East Africa uh, we are also saying organization of the trade how was this trade organized so looking at the different uh, things that make up trade a uh, day's trade you can understand we have different other aspects that make up trade transport commodities people who do trade so here let's look at the organization of this trade and we're saying where was it carried out so we're saying the trade was conducted along the coast 
along the coast known in the interior let's get this right along the coast of east africa between a thousand and a thousand five hundred a.d and then who are the traders as we have just seen earlier the traders uh, uh, the, the traders uh, the trade was conducted among several people i.e it was between the coastal people and arabs persian chinese indians and malaysians uh, these are the foreigners in, in getting contact with africans at the coast of east africa what was the transport here so we're saying the dots uh, this this were early boats early ships early uh, mega ships that were sailing on the ocean and this is the indian ocean uh, by the power of monsoon winds so we are saying the major transport of the foreigners here not the africans but we're talking about the foreigners uh from arabia uh, persian and then malaysian indian and china were using those sailing on the indian ocean trade by the power of monsoon winds monsoon winds that were bringing and monsoon winds that were taking them as we've seen earlier next we are also saying this trade was organized on two the trade items and in in the trade items we have two types so we have the imports and the exports now the exports are commodities that were provided by the africans and exported to arabia and uh, persia and other different uh, countries in india and many many others so these were commodities that were traded by the africans uh, brought in by the Africans then the imports these are commodities that were brought in by the foreigners for example the Arabs then the Persians the Malaysians and the Indians and the Chinese so we're saying the exports the, the main exports from East Africa and the African people we had what we call gold we had ivory we had slaves we had copper honey and the bee wax basically that was our major uh, uh, commodities as Africans into this trade then the imports uh, these are commodities that were brought in by the foreigners and these are the Asians the Persians the Chinese the Indians as we have said so so we're saying uh, majorly we had guns guns we had clothes we had beads we had iron we had utensils uh, we had uh, spices uh, we had uh, and many others as we shall, as we're seeing here in, our, uh, in the picture here uh, spice missing basically the Indians so these were commodities brought in by the uh, foreigners the Arabs the Indians and the Chinese and the Malaysians then the means of exchange here yeah. so we're saying the medium of exchange was butter trade I, I have a commodity you have a commodity we exchange I need a gun I have gold we exchange and that is trade because trade basically is the exchange can be of goods can be of services so we're saying here uh, the major exchange uh, medium of exchange was butter trade uh, later we see it uh, growing into uh, uh, bringing in cowl shell which were later introduced and then the Indians came up with the Indian rupees uh, as we shall see so the cowl shells uh, replaced butter trade and they acted as money uh, to, 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 to exchange goods and this actually improved uh, the, the the trade around this area so we're also saying communication and organization of this trade how did they communicate how were they communicating uh, these are foreigners from arabia and these africans from africa and they speak different totally different languages so how were they communicating so we're saying under the organization under communication we're saying the media of communication was kiswahili which mastered to participate in the trade so you had to learn kiswahili now you may ask a question here how does kiswahili come about so we are saying this is a language that was developed in this trade as you'll find that kiswahili has all different uh, uh, vocabularies of africans and then arabs so this is a language that came up because of the intermarriage or the inter uh, relation or the connection or the contact uh, between these two different people and thus the arabs and then the Africans and then we see Swahili coming up so this acted as a medium of communication in this Indian Ocean trade now moving on we see transport we have looked at the transport earlier of the doors uh, which the foreigners used and the vessels uh, we're also saying uh, what about the, 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 the Africans at the cost so we're saying here uh, we see them using uh, uh, 
head footage uh, footage uh, and then head portrait uh, moving from one place to another on foot basically because we never had ve uh, vehicles we never had uh, trains we didn't have locomotives by then so foreigners are using those sailing on the Indian Ocean by the power of monsoon winds and then Africans are uh, using uh, food to move from one place to another and then carrying commodities uh, onto their heads and that's what we're trying to see around here you can see this the head portage that we're talking about here so in the interior at the cost so Africans got goods from the interior and then traded with their foreigners at the cost of East Africa and then this trade basically it was at the periphery it was at the cost of East Africa it's the long distance trade that we see it entering into the interior of East Africa as we shall see later so moving on what were the factors that led to the growth and development of this Indian Ocean trade one may ask because it, 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 it is recorded in the history of East Africa and the history of the world so we want to understand now what were the factors that led to the development of this Indian Ocean trade factor number one as we shall say uh, the best most important uh, is transport and this was powered by the monsoon wind as we have said earlier uh, winds that fasted the movement of uh, the Arabs uh, from Arabia to the coast of East Africa and then as they dock at the coast of East Africa they get the commodities and then again the monsoon take them back to Arabia so that completes the cycle of trade basically this was a major factor in the growth and development of the Indian Ocean trade next is the introduction of Islam by the Arabs uh, brotherhood you know the connection between now the Africans and the Arabs as they are worshiping one God and they have this relationship into one religion uh, created brotherhood and thus led to the growth and development of this trade at the cost of East Africa so the introduction of next of Kiswahili and Arabic language uh, uh, acted as a means of communication which aided uh, the exchange of goods uh, at the cost of East Africa hence uh, developing the Indian Ocean trade uh, point number four we are saying the introduction of the Sharia law as uh, of administration at the cost of East Africa by the Arabs you know how tough it is uh, no theft no thuggery and it was so strict that uh, it managed to control trade at the cost of East Africa and uh, hence legislating and thus developing the trade at the cost of East Africa uh, number five we're saying the introduction of guns by the Arabs and what was the use of the guns here we are saying the guns were basically used for protection and then Africans used them uh, to just hunt for slaves and then ivory and then also protecting their goods so guns were quite important and, and, and vital into this trade as the major factor here was for protection and then uh, getting a uh, rating for slaves number next is the introduction of cowrie shell and rupees Indian rupees uh, we're saying earlier on we had butter trade now we are seeing carrier shells and rupees which were introduced by the Indians so this uh, they placed the butter trade exchange and then we see cowrie and rupees act as a monetary and money uh, item in the trade which later led to the development of this trade so next we're saying highly demand goods uh, for example as we've seen Africans were exporting gold it was highly demanded ivory uh, slaves by that time uh, iron. and and we're also saying uh, here also the spices that were brought in as import as, as 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 imports by the Arabs and then the clothes and the guns were highly demanded so this trade uh, was composed of highly demanded goods uh, thus uh, increasing its uh, growth and thus we see it growing so terribly fast and becoming uh, a recurative trade around this area so the cool coastal climate also facilitated the growth and development of this Indian Ocean trade at the coast of East Africa so we're saying if you in a, a harsh environment uh, I don't think trade can take place there so we're saying climate also uh, uh, contributed a lot to the growth and development of this trade and next we're saying the good natural harbors where these those were docking 
uh, coming and then docking at the coast of East Africa, the Mombasa area, the Dar es Salaam area, the Mogadishu area. So we are seeing uh, the harbors were deep and could allow these bigger vessels to just sail and dock at uh, the coast of East Africa for easy uh, offloading and unloading of the merchants and uh, the goods. So we are saying uh, the presence of a big population on the coast you know where trade is, is so much influenced by population and we're saying the big uh, the, the presence of a big population at the coast of East Africa uh, facilitated the growth and development of this uh, trade at the coast of East Africa so we are looking at this as uh, some of the factors that contributed to the growth and development of Indian Ocean trade at the coast of East Africa Right now, we want to look at the effects of this trade. How did it affect the people of uh, East Africa at, uh, at large? So the effects, as we can see, uh, both uh, physical, uh, human, we can look at uh, monetary, we can look at growth and development, many others. So let's dive into it. So we are saying uh, the Indian Ocean trade led to the growth of coastal towns. Uh, for example, Mombasa. Uh, Malindi, uh, Kilwa, Mogadishu, Pemba, mention them Zanzibar, mention them quite a number here. Uh, this trade led to the growth and involvement of these coastal towns and up to now they attribute their growth to this Indian Ocean trade. Next is the growth of Afro-Arab culture and this is the, the, the Swahili culture as we shall see later. We shall have to cover a full a full course around this area the growth and development of swahili culture so this is what we're saying afro-arab culture afro is africans and then arab <coughs> um, culture uh, it lay, uh, this was uh, facilitated due to the contact between africans and arabs hence leading to the growth of uh, afro-arab culture uh, which is known as the swahili culture uh, the spread of islam at the coast here, yeah? Islam. You, you very well know that uh, uh, the Arabs are Muslims and uh, they came at the coast, uh, did much of the trade there, and then this actually uh, led to the spread of Islam at the coast of East Africa. That's why you see up to date at the coast of East Africa, Islam is dominant around that area. Next, led to the introduction of new crops, uh, for example, rice and wheat. Uh, this was brought in by the Arabs and the foreigners at the coast of East Africa, uh, which we, up to now, we enjoy as Africans. It was brought in by the traders at that time. Uh, abandoned uh, fishing, Africans abandoned fishing and farming, and they joined trading activities uh, because it was booming, definitely. So people left uh, agriculture and farming and joint trade that was the indian ocean trade now the introduction of guns at the coast also was a big effect at the coast of east africa uh, these were brought in by Ar arabs and the foreigner foreigners uh, foreign traders uh, who introduced guns as their commodity of exchange and these were the imports brought in by the foreign uh, foreign traders and these guns created a lot of impact in East Africa as we have earlier said uh, they were used for protection and later they were used for raiding slaves later for fighting uh, expansions to wars by the kingdom and the chiefdoms in Africa uh, so they really contributed a lot to the change of African society next is introduction of new techniques of boat building as you've seen at the doors this was known to our thing as Africans uh, because we had the land and, and uh, sailing across the Indian Ocean it's not our technology and we, we history does not mention it anywhere that we are we 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 we, we contributed to that technology of building boats no this was brought in by the Arabs and uh, these techniques were all introduced to the coast of East Africa and Africans also got to learn about these techniques and started uh, building and constructing and setting up their ships and doors by then so it was because of the Indian Ocean trade that we see this happening at the coast of East Africa the introduction of slave trade and slavery uh, as 
Arabs were in demanding for slaves so this also was brought in by the Indian Ocean trade uh, lastly the coastal people adopted new styles of dressing and these styles of dressing uh, the Sharia uh, the, 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 the way Muslims dress um, the veils so this this silk dresses this 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 was introduced in by the uh, in the, the Arabs uh, from Arabia as they came in to trade with Africans in the Indian Ocean uh, trade so basically that explains uh, what it was and uh, the effects it caused to people of East Africa and uh, uh, thank you for watching this and uh, see you in the next one please don't forget to check out on our website for more content and that is www.toweracademic.com and this, the link is also in the description uh, below you just click on it and you're able to see different courses and different topical courses around history geography and many other subjects entrepreneurship business uh mission technology and many others just check it out just click the link below and you're able to see much more thank you see you in the next one